You are listening to Level Up Your Gaming Podcast, Episode 11, Heroes and Villains. Today we talk about playing a hero's game and a villain's game. We discuss how they are different and our thoughts on each type of game. We also put out the call to challenge your players to try a game outside their comfort zone, specifically a hero's game. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com. Also, if you like the show, please subscribe, leave us a review, or tell a friend. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Level Up Your Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron, and across from me, uh, he would be Batman if he had the money and time, Jared. Oh God, yes, I would totally be Batman. How are you doing today, Jared? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. Or should I say Bruce Wayne? I mean, I wish. Right? I mean, who wouldn't be Batman? <laughs> like, you're crazy if you think Batman's not the greatest superhero who ever lived. You're always the one who plays Batman in our games. Yeah, the Iron Batman. You have a problem with this. I have a, I have a problem with making the Iron Batman. Note, note to sell, or not note to sell, note to listeners. Uh, let your players know when they kind of fall into a uh, a very stereotypical role. It enlightens them. It it really does, and then it gives them the opportunity to play uh, new and di- new and interesting characters. You know, we discussed. I think it was what last week or two weeks ago about like I'm playing a character who just cannot make a decision to save his life. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> do you want to die by fire or live? Uh, let me think about it. I need, I need some time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, before we get started into our uh, topic here, uh, if you want to talk to us, speak with us, uh, get to know us, uh, communicate with us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can also subscribe to the show. Please tell a friend. Please share it with everybody that you know who loves gaming because this is not just here to level up your gaming. It's here to level up your player's gaming as well. Did I ever tell you that my boss's son actually games and so he wanted to know the name for our podcast he did did yeah. you tell him yeah of course I awesome did. that's awesome my boss like and that's that's one thing that i always uh you know everyone knows that i i push like let your freak flag fly let you fly exactly you know i mean like i work for you know a very big time company and i, I deal with people who make just they are tremendously successful businessmen um they're 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 moguls they're giants and I'm just like, yes, I D&D every Saturday. Like, because, like, I tell them D&D because nobody knows White Wolf. That's how I always describe it, too, is I just say D&D. You yeah. Know, if I say tabletop role-playing, people are like, what's that? What's that? And it's like, all right, D&D. Like, there. The the, the basics. Every, you know? Everyone seems to know what D&D is or have some concept of what it is. It, exactly. Because either they have it from, um, you know, either experience with it uh knowledge from you know the the one show stranger things uh nowadays and it, prior to that the satanic panic exactly you know dude some catchphrase even for like something that was so bad some catchphrases are awesome <laughs> satanic panic but uh today we are going to be talking about heroes and villains specifically should you be doing a game geared around heroes or a game around villains what are maybe the pros and cons about each one and how to tackle them yeah, um, you know, for for many many years for our listeners, um, you know, as we were coming up in the gaming world and, and becoming more mature uh, gamers, uh, I think we we tremendously focused on bad guys, um, even though we didn't really realize that these were bad people. Yeah. So if you listen to our intro, we started with Heroes Unlimited, which yep. was our original um, you know role playing game, and in that you have this kind of scale of like ultra hero to ultra bad guys so it's your archetype so like uh obviously in D D, you got like chaotic neutral lawful good ex- for palladium ex- it's uh anarchist diabolic principled yeah and so it, yeah essentially those were them and we always picked sort of the middle of the road or one tilt to the bad side Just which was one tilt i wanted to say it was scrupulous unscrupulous unscrupulous Yep, always picked on scrupulous. Like, well, yeah, ah, because it's like it's like it's like. Well, I wouldn't outright murder, but uh, I would outright murder. But you know, if I had to, I guess <laughs> if someone points a gun at me, I will waste them and their entire family. Like, <laughs> but they pointed a gun at me first. Yeah, they, like, I was in the right. Okay? All right, hey, officer, officer, I, I, he pulled first. <laughs> like, and the reason you shot nine-year-old Timmy was his dad pulled first. <laughs> 
He is a threat. I, Got in I, my I neutra- way. I neutralized the threat. <laughs> Christ almighty. But that, um, that's why we ended up doing all those mercenary games. That's the yeah. only way that we really could do I it. mean, mercenaries is so easy. You know, here you go. Here's a bundle of money. Go hurt people. And it's like you don't really realize, like, that is just a horrible. Like, uh, for my uh, for our D&D uh, listeners, um, I know that mercenary is so strong. Like, here's a, here's a package of gold. Kill this dragon. Like, that dragon might have a family. You never know. Or go go take care of this, you know, uh, dwarf. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, go whack the dwarf king. Like, yeah. Like, uh, that uh, is a royal lineage of over a thousand years. Excuse me? That seems like pretty extreme here. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's just, it's when you have morally unscrupulous characters or characters that are diabolic or, or villainous, um, even though those games can be fun, they absolutely can be. I mean, we did them for years and had a good time. They're not challenging. They have zero ch- when when all morality is off the table, and I can engage in whatever horrible, awful things that I t- I know of, you know. And I I have a sick, twisted like knowledge base. I think I think when we uh, when we started it was pretty recently actually after we were playing the uh, kind of heroes in our games, we had looked back on it and went. If we went back to doing the villain thing, it would just be too easy. <laughs> it's it's too easy because it's like it's like it's like this the person place needs the, a better better class of criminal, you know. Yeah, I mean it's 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 like it's like well we're we're playing investigators, okay? So we need to interrogate information from people. How do you do that in a friendly, helpful way that isn't like, awful? Like exactly like part of my skill set is I, I know how to waterboard a person. Like I shouldn't know that, but I do. And it, it's an easy way to get answers out of people. I mean, like literally, unless you're a hardened uh, militant, I mean, you're going to break and it's going to be pretty quick. Yes. Um, people don't like it, but they, they're not a big fan. Um, one of the things that, uh, that those heroes bring is, is just an amazing, extraordinary uh, uh, opportunity for role playing and for a challenge that that is so it, it's so awesome when you can't pull the gun and just waste everyone in the room. So for our listeners, uh, we were playing those the, the detectives, uh, the earlier game that we had, uh, and Aaron uh, put together this really great story. Uh, and at one point, our characters uh, find the missing person. It was a girl, and what happens is we come upon her. I guess. Uh, ritual into womanhood. I don't know how you uh, her her becoming or transformation. Yeah, so it's kind of a, her indoctrination to the tribe of people that she was a part of. And and so there's this and there's this shaman who's got like a knife, and we we come upon him. We're detectives. We're armed. They've got bows and arrows. They point these bows and arrows at us, and we have this moment to either trust the tribe that they are really there to like indoctrinate her. Wait, because they had, like kidnapped people. her. Basically, yeah, they had, and like. I had my hand on my gun and just like the amount of just conflict inside me as a player was just, it was such an awesome moment. And the fact that the, the moment ended with trust being the right decision, it was such like, I hadn't experienced that in 20 years of gaming. Trust no bitch was, was like, should have been my motto. All right. (laughs) I should have that tattooed on me. Trust no bitch. But this time we did. And just it it was just this fantastic opportunity and I and I really encourage storytellers to, to give opportunities like that. Like, oh my god, maybe the villain isn't so villainous. Maybe I mean that for this young lady it was it was her being welcomed into a people that she had never known she was a part of. Yeah, my goal is to try to have a villain in this game that was not as villainous. So obviously you guys are playing the heroes, so morally unscrupulous people or diabolical or evil, you know, chaotic people would probably just have said, that's our mark. We have to save her, kill everybody else. Kill everyone else. Just pull the triggers. It and would have been easy to do that. It would have been it would have been just made for a big old combat and a brouhaha. And they had have, bows and arrows. Yeah, and you had guns. We have guns. They brought bows to a gunfight. <laughs> I mean, like, 10 bucks to Native American, or, you know, props to Native Americans. They put up a jolly good fight with bows and arrows uh, versus our guns, but... We now have, like, Glocks. You know, semi-automatics are just 
fantastic devices. Yeah, you don't want to be in a primitive weapon fight and somebody's got the semi-automatic weapon. Okay, this is not a good place to be. You're already at a disadvantage. I think Ken had a shotgun. Like it's just it was bad. Good. Yeah, no, he was he was packed. He, yeah, he, he he had he had all this different ammunition. He's so always like, packed. Yeah. He had that. He had the like duffel bag of disaster. Yeah, like it just had like shotguns and like fifteen different ammo types in there. But uh, no, but that, that that's an example of, of a situation that obviously, if you're playing villains, it just would be very easy to to walk through that situation. You don't have to put any thought into the situation. And that's not to say that your heroes might not have to fight their way out of the situation because had right. it gotten bad, your heroes would have had to make a decision. I mean, there there was a a point where even being a hero rescue, even if we had decided not to just like waste everyone and just like run up, grab the girl, and try to run out. It, it could have been a very intense moment with no one uh, just getting waxed or, you know, us just killing off a bunch of people. And, you know, it it really the, the hero's path offers you so much more also as a storyteller mm-hmm. because the hero's path is about transformation of self um, from from maybe a good person to an even better person um, from a from a, a lonely boy in the street just who wants more gruel from his orphanage to hero of the schoolyard. Yeah, I mean, you think you go back to, um, you know, our villain days, uh, you know, our, our, our morally questionable human days. Um, I mean, it was always shoot first, ask questions later. Like, you really had to just kind of give us the people who, who were going to, to give us the answers because anybody who was kind of against us, we I mean, we just eliminated. Eliminated. And in, in, in every time that you encountered a villain, I mean, that was our, our straight-up action was to eliminate the villain immediately. There was no question about what to do with the villain. Um, I think that uh, when you are playing in that villainous role, uh, if you've ever played a game like Vampire the Masquerade or something like that, a lot of vampires sit in that role where you're playing the the like you know the the underbelly i mean the best you can kind of really get out of a hero class in that isn't like an anti-hero uh, you know and and that's why it's it's fun um yeah, right it's fun it's funny um i love the concept of humanity in vampire the masquerade i freaking love it never use it i never take full advantage of that system we never really took advantage of the humanity system but we did actually start putting more onus on it in a more recent game because, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think I ran the, the Bruja game, which is the last vampire game we did. I think that was the last yeah. vampire game. And, uh, bitches. <laughs> I was playing an addict and, uh, recovering, sorry, recovering, recovering addict. addict. But there was, there was a situation where, uh, I mean, you guys were, 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 were just doing nefarious things in the city and, <laughs> um, yeah. And, Essentially, what it, what it boiled down to was that you had to do, um, you know, just just terrible things to like large swaths of people. So your yeah. humanity went from like seven, which is like a normal person, basically. <laughs> if I can give you an idea of this, the one to ten scale, ten is like the most pious of people, <laughs> like the <think> Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, like, read his autobiography, was not that by bi- or pious. Think parts of Gandhi, parts of Gandhi, <laughs> the popular myth of Gandhi. Okay, and then you know everything below that. Basically, when you get down to five, you're pretty much at like like I will kill anyone who I need to kill. Like, and then four is like like you are abandoning your humanity. Like you're you're getting to like serial killer levels at that point. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think you did dro- you dropped to five in that game because that was how you how you ended up playing out these sets of scenes and whatnot. And I think that you played them within the context of the character, but I don't think you realize how fast merciless that, yeah. and, and, and just horrific. I did it. Yeah, no, I, I definitely uh, didn't understand it because I was just going with the flow. Like, yeah. ah, you know, my, I had an objective, you know, get money. Um, and, and, and that was the problem when get money is the objective. Where's the transformation of the character? Where's the, where is the, the turmoil? I mean, like, Honestly, unless you're watching a comedy which has a sole objective of making you laugh, uh, with movies there are several objectives. You know, some parts are meant to make you cry. Some parts are meant to make you reflect on your own life. Some parts are meant to fill you with action and, and enjoyment. You know, it's it's 
With a hero's journey, you have more of those options. With a villain's journey, it's just a race to the bottom. And trust me, the bottom can come up fast. You know, the being the, the, the most despicable person in the room is not a hard challenge. You just got to do despicable things and, and continue to do them whenever you get the opportunity. And it doesn't provide any sort of path for transformation of the character. It just keeps going down until you're at the point where honestly um as a storyteller you need to have a discussion on comfortableness with your players like hey guys i'm I'm not comfortable playing out that scene or or engaging because like i have i've i have actually played with gamers who went the villainous route and just took it to levels that i i thought were shouldn't be played out or or should not be even role played i thought it was uh, was d- distasteful and uh, unnerving. Yeah, I mean, I would have that discussion at you know your sessions. You go back to our gathering podcast. It's the very first one, very first. One. Um, and you know, yeah, isn't that the second? Because the intro is the first, technically. It's the first real podcast. Episode one. Episode one. Okay. Fair yeah. Enough. Um, but I mean, I would go back to that and have that session zero. Make sure that everybody knows the rules, knows the limits of what you want to do. See, the problem is, is that when you play with a new table or new players, new players tend to want to play the middle of the road person, which will be, I will do whatever I have to do. Um, but I also kind of want to be viewed as the hero. Um, Very much so. so. I've so, seen that. Yeah. So I, th- I think that, you know, like, like, oh, well, I want the good outcome of the game, but I want to be able to do whatever I can need to do throughout the game to to achieve the the ends so the ends justify the means um within the game itself and i think that the problem that you're going to have as a storyteller is you can run a couple of games like that but at some point you're going to want to change your style to have the players be more on the side of either true hero true villain um and you know your outcome is going to be d- dictated by one or the other and you don't want to be like a dick when you, they're playing true villain and you're now sending like the national guard after them yeah and we'll get into that with uh consequences uh which i you know i think is in the docket um it's in the hopper it's in the hopper yeah i like that hopper um so that was weird i like that hopper not like i haven't heard that term like fifty thousand times <laughs> um okay but uh, when you know when I think of um, uh, villain or villain versus heroes, uh, there is uh, especially when it comes to you storytellers who are listening to us, um, you are the guide. Um, one, uh, there's a lot. Uh, I, w- I will tell you this: there's a lot of out of game conversations that might have to happen. Um, you know, if someone's got a, a let's say a neutral. Or, or sorry, like a like a I don't know what the really good guys is in. I think lawful good. Lawful good, and they're just like mercilessly hacking their way through a village. You need to have a conversation with your player because I, I I know that D and D doesn't have any. Well, I you know what I don't know because I don't know that system like the back of my hand. I don't know if it has any morality uh, system. Not that I've seen. Not not that I've experienced. It doesn't have any moral points or anything like that. Again, a lot of that is for you as a storyteller to enforce and play out upon your yes. characters because the morality system is only so good until you, you know, as you decide to incorporate it into your system. So if there is a hard rule in D&D that the uh, you know, city guards will not talk to anyone who is chaotic, okay, then you have to play that out that when somebody comes in there, they're they're raising their swords and going after you. You know, and and that's that that brings up a good point of like when when it comes to a villain, uh, if you have characters that are playing that villainous way, um, anybody who's ever been to a bar, uh, anyone who's ever been out in public, and you've you've met that guy that you just you know you shouldn't mess with, you know we don't generally go up and buy them drinks. Um, we don't generally converse with the guy that we think is probably going to rob us in the alleyway and uh, and uh, try to take my wallet. Generally not going to hang out with them. Going to leave them, give them their space. Um, what do you mean? They seem like the best, best guy in the room. Let's what go talk about cool guy let's, club over there. So. Let's go chill out the guy with hate <laughs> tattooed on his on his knuckles. Not that there's anything wrong with getting the words hate tattooed on your knuckles. Because I want knuckle tattoos. We all know this. You do? Oh, God, yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know that about you. Oh, yeah. 
I'm like, damn, right there. I, <laughs> I even got the numbers all picked out and everything. <laughs> I do. What? Yeah, I so, love tattoos. <laughs> but, but this is the reason why you don't, maybe wouldn't want to do villains. I, th- I think the natural progression at some point is that you want to, you know, th- there's one more thing that I want to touch on with villains and, and part of the problem is that getting a group of villains to work together is a lot harder than getting a group of heroes to work together. And I think that you end up with um, a situation where a lot of your players uh, run into this uh, to this issue where, well, he's in my way and I should just be able to take out my fellow player. And uh, I've got strong opinions about doing a PvP game. Um, and I think that that's sort of an inevitability. I, I think in we put that game. in the don't yeah. episode. Like, don't do PvP. Yeah. Uh, don't have your paladin fighting everyone because you put them with a group of, I don't know, like serial murderers. You know, and I think a lot of storytellers, what they don't realize is when they start a villainous game, it never in, it's never intended on a villainous game. You know what I mean? It's the players um, who kind of build it that way and i'm not like players because I, I i love my players um but they go down that path they go down that path and it's just so easy to slip down that path and i think sometimes what you need to do as the storyteller is is definitely uh give them a reality check you know guys this is a really awful terrible thing and there, there's funny you know you can use a little humor like guys ah this is a this is freaking horrible. Would we like not to engage in this? And I guess when we come eventually to our consequences episode, we'll, we, we'll talk about realistic consequences of, of going down the dark side, you know, for our, our, um, uh, for this, for the sake of this one, you know, with, um, I think what most people do is they don't set out for an evil game. I think if you set out for an evil game, you literally get everyone around the table and like, let's play the villains. Let's do it for a game. And it might work for a couple of sessions. It might be fun just to go down the road of chaos, destruction, and, you know, blowing up everything in your way like an action movie. Uh, don't, it's probably suited for a, a shorter game. A short game where everyone needs to blow off some steam. Yeah. You know, because you just had a very intense game that was, you know, a thriller or whatever. Uh, everyone just needs to blow off some steam and, and you know, pull off numerous amounts of, of brass, um, you know, and just without... Re- with merciless regard. Uh, but don't forget that you can have those action moments with heroes. Um, heroes can be action oriented, but I think what most people, what happens is, is they set off without a guide of like, I would like these people to be heroes or villains. Yes. They kind of go, well, they're going to do what they're going to do. Never go in. Or well, I shouldn't say never, but like try not to go in with that. Like, well, my players are going to do what they're going to do. Cause trust me, then, then it's KYP. Know yes. your players. If 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 you know that one of them just loves to create the character who just beats the ever living breaks off of everyone who's a villainous, he's gonna do what he's gonna do. It's the trick of inspiring your players to be the better player, to take on the role of a character, um, to fill a, a, a an an area or explore an area that they haven't yet gone into, because even morality is an area of exploration. It's not just exploring the continent of Asilion, you know, or the continent of Bergon. It, it's, it's, it's about exploring what is it to be a hero? What is it to save the damsel in distress every time? Not just go, eh. What is it to really say, like, you know, we're in this, this continent and slavery is, is abundant and we're the heroes and slavery is wrong. How do we stop that? And, it, it, and, and the fun thing is, is you, you know, don't stop slavery. I mean, like America did it with, with swords and guns, but that mm-hmm. was a war. But it started off political ideas. It started off with making stump speeches and uh, abolitionists. Exactly. I mean, so the the big thing here is that, that after you move out of your villain phase, like Jared said, you know, keep that as a short game. When you start moving then into the hero side of things, and this is kind of maybe where, where I want to – direct us because because this is what we found from our gaming experience was that once we actually started moving into the hero side of things we we i I think that really changed how our players viewed the game as a whole i think that we actually started making uh some really conscious decisions about how 
um, about how we were going to, uh, you know, tackle different situations that we had previously been put into. So a lot of the times we had been playing supernatural creatures, and supernatural creatures have no regard for human life. Okay, so none. It's not none whatsoever. And um, you know, once we started playing humans, though, I think that was the first time that we really got our morality check in order, which was we can't just kill the human. Or we can't just kill the person in front of us. We can't torture them for information. We have to actually consider, you know, do we need to kill us? Do we need to give them to the authorities? Who do we have to involve? And it, like, and it was really awesome because, like, and, and one of the ways to help, I guess, keep the hero the hero is, is when they're not just travelers with a backpack. You have a home. The police will come to your – they do make house calls. And, I mean, like all of our characters, I think all but one were married. With kid or no 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 because uh, Ken's character was divorced yeah um but like you and my character both were married with grandchildren yeah I had think. had 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 families and established you know like, lives if I torture this guy they're gonna impound my truck yeah I mean we were faced with a pretty tough moral decision one of our GM games I mean God, yeah I'll be I'll be honest with with, with that I mean that was, that was Ken's game that was Ken he he uh. Which, which which moral conundrum? The one in the one in New Jersey when when we had like defeated the villain. Okay, so uh, oh yeah, no, so, that was that was a moral decision. Yeah, yeah. So so we had played the basically the way that the the investigator game kind of worked out was it was kind of monster of the week. So we got to the villain and we vanquished the villain. However, it turned out that the villain was just like a possessed human. Okay, so there's just like blood and gore everywhere, and we're good people, and so we're like. Uh, what do we do? And then that was the first time that I think we started tinkering back into the old way. Like, let's go get we the police and did. let's go do this and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know what? The, the, this was the, the really actually pretty inspiring moment as, as a player, kind of seeing it all come together, is Jared stepped up and said, no, this isn't right. I'm the one to blame for this, and I will talk to the police about it. And, you know, I will take the fall for it. Like, you guys keep on going, keep on giving up the good, giving the good fight. And I, like, 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 somebody has to take responsibility for what happened here today. And I think it was a very, very cool moment because it was like, j- j- just try to imagine that around your table in a situation where, you know, law enforcement or, um, you know, the guard or somebody who's a, who's, who's a high authority would have come down upon your characters for a, met, a moral uh, conundrum like that and see how your players would react see if somebody would have stepped up to the plate to kind of take that that bullet for the team and to play truly the hero which was the remorse of this shouldn't have happened the way it happened now what ended up happening was he washed it all away in like a scene um, which was fine yeah. but uh, it was very very hard for us to separate ourselves from that because he's like oh no you just, you'll just walk away from this and I'm like we're like no, no, there's no. Blood there's everywhere. blood everywhere. The police are gonna be here. They're gonna know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, because it it wasn't just a possessed person. It was a possessed person with like supernatural strength that we had hit with an axe several times. Yeah, yeah. It was, but it was, but it was, it was a moral conundrum that we ended up having to, <laughs> to, uh, to work our our way through. And you know, um, I I, I think that that was again very inspiring actions by by you playing in character uh and and just kind of taking taking one for the team i don't think that any of our character all of our characters prior to that would have tried to cover up that scene oh yeah and and we almost slid into that we were almost like get the hacksaw on the bleach yeah you know i mean like it we almost really went for that and i, I was very proud when we stopped like even though i was going to lose a character and and my character i very much liked i enjoyed but it was it was it was a good end to that character. It was gonna be not all good ends end in death. Sometimes it's that player taking one for the team and uh, you know having having to go into the dungeon. Exactly. But that leads to more adventure. Go rescue the hero. Exactly. Think think of how that would have inspired the rest of the heroes in your team and and whatnot. And, and I'm really what what where I'm trying to get here with the heroes. And playing heroes is that you don't always have to be like the perfect pious good guy. No, you just have to be on the side of morality and right. Meaning that yes, you will, you know, 
enact justice where justice is deserved, maybe. Okay, maybe your character is a little bit more on the side of caution before justice. Maybe your character is, no, I'm never going to do that. I'm a pacifist. I don't want to do that at all. Yeah. Um, but all of those archetypes can work together in a game. They can. Absolutely. And I, and I think that those archetypes uh, really do work well. And I think it's going to really level up your gaming uh, to, to try and experiment and have fun with a heroic game, a true hero's game um, where you don't have everyone playing the, the, the selfish, I'm going to get mine, I'll just blow away anyone who gets in my way, um, or you know, ship breaks, people die, sort of laissez-faire attitude. You know, I think it, it's it, it's a level of maturity that I think your players may really come to enjoy because it's it's so challenging. It's so challenging in such a unique way. Like to take my tactical knowledge and use it not for just pulling off rounds. You know, like no, we're gonna we're gonna watch the guard so we can slip past him instead of like we're gonna watch the guard aim for three turns, put a bullet in him that's quiet move on you know no it's it's so we can slip past him and and it's it's so much more intense because once a guard's taken out threat's gone eliminated all we got to worry about is somebody else finding the body but once once we kill everyone else in the facility there'll be no one left to find the body comparatively to we got to slip past him and then the next guard oh he might double back and it it brings so much more uh, suspense to an, to and, an and also and also put this in there as well because you might think well oh well a hero's game nobody's ever gonna you know get into combat and it's always gonna be talking talk, no talk. bad guys no, need a good super beating. super easy so you're playing a modern game i'll just give you the example here you're playing a modern game your players are are retiring for the evening or they're getting dinner together okay you're at a bar you're getting dinner together some drunk guy wants to get into a fight with you okay can't do anything about that it happens to good people all over the world <laughs> Happens to not so good people. <laughs> happens to everybody. It happens to everybody. Okay, <laughs> it, it can happen to anybody that some that some idiot like bumps into you. He drops his drink, and then now there's a fight. Now there's gonna be a fight. Okay, and then your players get that 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 thrill of the fight, but they didn't cause the fight. They didn't cause the anger. They're just stopping what's happening right now. Exactly. If you got the heroes, uh, you know, even there's just so many situations where a hero. Who's willing, you know, because it, it takes a lot of courage uh, to jump into a situation uh, that's a developing on the street. Um, sometimes, you know, it, but when you have heroes that are trained and, and can do that sort of thing, they do it all the time. You know what I mean? And 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 trust me, there's there's a lot of a lot of good fights to fight. Daredevil is a good guy, right? I mean, we all love Daredevil. We all love Spider Man. We all love Batman. But especially Batman, Jared, <laughs> especially Jared. Uh, but Batman gets into a lot of fights, but he never kills. His his most interrogation is I'm gonna. I mean, okay. To to be perfectly honest, Batman has killed and he's killed several times in the past. That's actually a fallacy to believe that he doesn't kill. It's that's more of a modern take, but it's a modern take that I like. I like that he doesn't take life. Um, I think it's cool because um, it. it it makes it hard. I mean, if mm. Superman, if Superman could kill people, he would just rip literally everyone in half. Yeah, but th- think about your fights in that context there. So you get into that bar fight there, okay, or you start a bar fight with your your players because that's what you have to do. You have to push, push into your, you have to push into your players. Your players may not always seek at, seek out the action, so you can make the action happen. But oh, yes, they, they get into this bar fight now, and so if you have mortal morally unscrupulous players, they might just take out their sword and decapitate the man. Okay, but you have take out their lightsaber and decapitate yes, the man. Take out their lightsaber and decapitate the man. Take out their gun and shoot the man, and then flee the scene. Okay, but if you're playing, you know, moral characters, your characters and heroes, your characters will get into that fight, and they're gonna think, how do we stop this guy? Okay, they might use blunt objects. They might smack him over the head with a, bo- a beer bottle. Okay, but that's okay because their their goal is to incapacitate the man incapacitate. not murder the man <laughs> and that and that's where uh it does get a little uh good good point Ooh, good point um some gm uh slyness will have to go down because it, it's it's really hard like in white wolf they have very specific hit points uh and if you reach one past incapacitated they are dead in D D, you at least have like those dying hit points that like negative 10 or whatever it is 
but like in White Wolf, it's really hard. G- give your players the shot. They 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 cremate him with a good solid chair over the back of the head after like a good solid fight. Remember, your job as a, as a GM or your your role is, is to make it fun, realistic, and understand the timing. Like ah, this fight's been going on twenty minutes. It's, it, it you know this guy has thrown half the players around the bar. It's time for them to start winning. And suddenly uh, they roll a 15 on that 20 side die and you go, yep, you beat the DC. Yep. You, beat, you clobber him. Oh man, it was a good hit. He's down. He's down. He falls down. Oh, okay. You know, they're, they're not, I mean, like, unless you have players that are really great at math, like, I don't think I could pull that on Brian. Brian would be like, motherfucker, I can count. I mean, being a mathematician, <laughs> he slightly has that advantage of like. <laughs> I'm hyper good at math. I have a PhD. You might, you might have to. <laughs> you might, you, you, hopefully, you can pull the wool over the eyes and some of the other players. It's, it's a little bit easier in White Wolf because White Wolf, Wolf are contested roles, so there is no set DC. It is just. And I'm not going to tell you what I soaked. Oh yeah, no, I soaked perfectly to incapacitated. So, I mean, I mean, I don't know. May, maybe you set and establish a rule early on in your game that the or like a house rule which is something we could talk about sometimes house rules oh house but, rules yes um maybe you set up like a house rule that says like as combat goes on you do more damage the dc tends to go down like maybe you could you have that and then Ooh, then the players crazy. never know what your dc technically is um and that would uh that would work out i mean definitely but uh yeah. Do you got anything else you want to add to this subject? Uh, no, I think we covered it pretty well. Um, you know, I just encourage you all to try the road. Try the road. Explore that new path. Try a very moral hero game and see what you get out of it. See if you can challenge your players to, to rise to the occasion and, you know, bring your storytelling up to very ill to bring up them as well. Do it. Do it. Get it done. Uh, once again, if you want to get in contact with us, level up your gaming podcast at gmail.com uh, or subscribe, like this show. Uh, for Jared, I'm Aaron. Have a good uh, week, guys. Have a great week.